friends i am dr amdekar and in this video i am going to sum up the important messages coming out of the last four videos which were related to fever and i hope this summing up and giving you an important messages would help all of us to approach a child of a short duration fever very rationally and that is one of the major aims of our steer part of the youtube channel you may remember that dr chokani first gave us an idea about how fever is a friend and he said how the fever generates because of a cell damage which produce cytokines and then the message goes up to the hypothalamus to decide how high the fever should be and either by a peripheral vasoconstriction or a trigger the body heat is increased and then when the purpose is over possibly there is a cooling either naturally or by sweating he also emphasized any cell damage doesn't equate, equate to infection but there could be not only different types of infection but also non infective inflammation and further he elaborated that at times even without inflammation the neurological problems like a hypothalamic tumor or an autonomic nervous system disturbance can also lead to fever and a hyperthyroidism in which there is an increased basal metabolic rate may also be presenting with fever however there are always some more clues to all such unusual causes of fever and then he added finally there is also a heat fever where the excessive environmental heat the system cannot cope up with and therefore you get high fever and typically such fever the body peripherally as well as centrally is equally hot and rarely even the drug can cause a fever if this is so then he emphasized fever is really to help the nature and the body to recover and as the body heats up there is an increased blood flow to the site of damage that brings in lot of soldiers and antibodies and they contain the destruction and they also heal so friends fever is a friend and not a foe and if that is so then he elaborated very clearly that one should use paracetamol as an ideal antipyretic only when the patient feels discomfort reasonably to expect some comfort and not because of some particular degree of fever and then he also said how many simple measures like hydration ventilation less of clothing and occasionally even the need for any sponging with warm water not cold water can help control fever but our idea is not to control fever but find out the cause of fever and temporarily give a relief that is necessary when the fever causes discomfort in the next video dr palni raman discussed how we need to think before prescribing an antibiotic for a short duration fever and he said that majority of the times the short duration fever in the community especially in healthy individuals is due to viral infection more common in children than in adults and if so then by day 2 day 3 the whole process starts improving and whenever there is a high fever in a viral infection moment the fever comes down the patient looks temporarily a little better and typically viral infections affect the generalized systems in the body like cold and cough and loose stools and vomiting headache body ache and often there is a contact with such an infection in the family itself therefore he emphasized a very cautious approach to decide the prescription of an antibiotic for a short duration of fever and again we need to be very very careful about this message because there is a lot of antibiotic resistant infections all over the world simply because most of us all over the world not only in india misuse and abuse antibiotics during fever thereafter dr chokane did a different type of presentation and this was a interaction with the actual patients and he showed how three different types of fever 
a typical viral infection, a disease like typhoid, which starts with a mild to moderate fever and the fever builds up over the next 3-4 days, and a malaria, which has a very erratic fever. And he said that simply a six questions asked to the family, to the patient, answer mostly, reasonably correctly, which group of problems you are dealing with the short duration of fever. And those questions were, what was the onset of fever in the first 24 hours? Was it mild, moderate or very severe? How was the response to paracetamol? If there was some response to paracetamol during that period, how did the patient behavior change for the better? Interfebrile period, we call it. And then by day three, day four, whether there is any trend either getting better or getting worse or are there any localizing symptoms and so on. And finally, the contact, which tells you often that it's a viral infection. It was very nice that these three patients' interaction clearly helped us to differentiate the three common infections that most of the family physicians during a short duration fever episodes look for and I am sure this will help us a great deal. Friends, there is always a possibility that in science there is nothing very sacrosanct and nothing that can be said to be absolutely right. But even that is true with any test done and to that extent, this kind of an interaction actually with live patients told us how to kind of take a good history in case of a short duration of fever and then every time after such an interaction, Dr. Chokani gave a very good analysis of how he could make out with a good analysis of a history which group of problems the patient is likely to be coming to you. Of course, this was true for a short duration of fever, but it is important because every long duration of fever also starts with a short duration fever and the patients often come to you during the first few days of fever only when it progresses over a long time we call it a prolonged fever and to discuss this aspect of pyrexia of unknown origin dr joshi archana discuss very well how to consider an approach to a pyrexia of unknown origin she did mention very clearly that the theoretical definition of a pyrexia of unknown origin is a fever for three weeks with last one week in the hospital with several investigations and even at the end of all that when you don't know the cause we call it a pyrexia of unknown origin. Friends, we amongst our own colleagues felt that this is not a very ideal definition to follow clinically because we can't wait for three weeks and we can't hospitalize in the last week and do all kinds of tests but there must be some better way of a rational approach. And therefore she emphasized that within first four days, at the most for first seven days, you always get a, some clue whether you are dealing with the usual infections. And if you do not have any such clue, and if you have been very rational not to use antibiotics, then beyond seven days, the progress of the illness often tells you where you are. And she considered not so uncommon prolonged fevers like tuberculosis in our country, also some others like brucellosis and so on. But moment you go even beyond that towards the end of second week or beyond and most of the time the infections are ruled out, you start wondering whether this is a non-infective inflammation and she discussed two broadly groups one a rheumatological disorders and the second a malignancy. Friends, rheumatological disorders almost always have some other clues like a skin rash or an arthralgia or an arthritis or a mouth ulcers and you get a clue over a week or two and by third week you are very sure that you are not dealing with an infection. And when it comes to malignancy, malignancies in older children and adults could be localized and rarely present only with fever but generalized weakness whereas 
In childhood, the most of the malignancies are hematological, like leukemia or lymphoma, and they often come with fever, and obviously they have some hematological manifestation. Friends, then in these last four videos and the topics related to fever, I am sure if you understand this and follow this very well, you will be able to approach short duration fever rationally and that is exactly what we in this YouTube channel are trying to spread the message that we all should be rational and excellent and it is possible only with thinking. I hope you have enjoyed these four videos related to fever and my summing up and sending you messages. And next time the series will start addressing pain and in the next video I will come again and first discuss what pain means, why pain comes and what do we do and how we decide what the pain could be. I hope you will be with us even in next video. Thank you very much.